All right, hello and welcome to Open a World of Possibilities with Sky Developer. I'm your session host, Zalia Kuchwayo. Before we launch into our presentation today, I want to share our standard safe harbor message that deals with forward looking statements we make during the presentation. The information we share today about our current plans is accurate as of this time. These plans are subject to change based on normal product development cycles and in responses to unforeseen events. So please base purchase decisions on currently available features and functionalities. Also in this session, we may be providing guidance on how to make customizations to your BlackBot solutions. Support for customizations is retained by you, the customer. Please see your BlackBot scope of customer support for details. And now I'd like for Ben Wong to join us as our presenter. All right. Well, thanks. So. I'm super excited to be here presenting at my first Blackboard Developers Conference. Um, my name is Ben Wong, and the reason why this conference is so special to me is because I'm the product manager for Sky Developer. So I have a profound interest in the developer community that is surrounding Blackboard. So I'm presenting to you from Charleston, South Carolina, where I've been living for the past 13 years. And apparently every day someone is doing some yard work around here. So excuse me if you can hear that. Um, so yeah, I've been at Blackboard for 13 years. If you couldn't tell by my accent, it's not your typical Charlestonian accent. That's because I grew up in a town called Bristol, uh, which is in the UK. If you Google Bristolian accent, you'll hear that it's actually the same accent that pirates have. Um, in my free time, especially in this past year, I've been getting super into building guitars and guitar effects pedals, which is uh, a really nice hobby where I get to solve some problems that are very different to the types of problems I solve in my day job. Um, and lastly, my wife and I co-founded a nonprofit organization called Birthdays for All. And our mission is to provide birthday presents to children in foster care across the whole state of South Carolina. So I love that I get to work with social good organizations uh, like uh, we have represented here at this conference. And I want to try and help them any way I can. So that's enough about me. I want to learn more about you. So let's see if we can get Slido working. But if it's not working, Zalia, if you just let me know okay. if we have the room created or not. No, it's still not popping up. But okay. I would say if folks just want to drop it in the chat, you know, what their roles are, that will give me a, a good eye on, on what's appearing for our participants. Yeah, so I'd just like to know. Uh, if you're a developer who's also a Blackboard customer, or maybe if you're a developer at one of our partner organizations, or maybe you're a developer and you're thinking about becoming a partner, um, or maybe you're not a developer at all and you're you're just a techie or a tinkerer, uh, we welcome we welcome you as well. And even if you're not a developer and you're just interested in what's possible uh, with Sky Developer, I always have content for you too. Awesome. I, I see DBA database administrators and developers popping in. Um, so we'll have some great participants who have knowledge about their solution. Yeah, seeing a lot of DBAs, data analysts. Well, very cool. All right. So, Zawiya, let me know if I did the switch successfully. You okay, should be yes. seeing the Blackboard Sky graphic. All right, cool. Perfect. So if you were in the Demystify Sky session yesterday, you would have heard us talk about the real components of Blackboard Sky, breaking it down from this marketing graphic and um, just diving into the real components of Sky, such as Blackboard ID, some of the commerce concepts that we have, such as environments, capability packages. So these are all platform components that get surfaced in the products that you use today, such as Razor's Edge NXT, Financial Edge, uh, NXT, Church Management. And the vision is to have all our products built on the same platform. So we can take that same concept and apply it to Sky Developer, where Sky Developer represents the platform that enables our products to be extensible to third parties through Sky API, Sky UX, and Sky Add-ins. So in yesterday's session, 
we talked about those and what they are. And we also talked about the Sky Developer Portal as a central destination uh, for all developers to get started. And we covered the way that third party applications are authorized and the marketplace as a place for uh, customers to explore apps from our partners. So since yesterday's session did all the heavy lifting in explaining uh, what those things are, in today's session, I'm going to talk about some examples of how it's been used by our growing ecosystem that we've been building for the past few years. So to kick things off, uh, there's no better way to set the tone for this session than with this quote from our CEO, Mike Giannone, who said, there are now significantly more outside developers on our platform than Blackboard engineers, and we're providing the developer community and our partner network with the tools to extend and enhance customers' Blackboard solutions, helping them create truly connected offices. So let's look at some of the numbers behind that quote. So now we have over 5,000 registered Sky developer accounts on the platform, and that's not including any Blackboard staff. So a Sky developer account can be registered by customers creating something for their own organization, or partners hoping to create something for many organizations, or maybe just individual consultants who get hired to build something specific for a specific organization. So from that pool of developers, we now have over 3,000 applications registered on the platform. And of those applications, about 1,900 of them actually connected to customer environments. So the growth here is really encouraging, especially because this isn't a completely brand new program. Uh, it's been running for a few years now. So to still uh, be getting over 30% growth year over year in some of these numbers is really great to see. And I hope that conferences like this is going to just keep um, helping it grow further. So the strength of the Sky Developer ecosystem is really vital to our customers as we want to make our solutions fully extensible so that they play well with other critical systems that they depend on. So we know that most social good organizations don't have developers in-house to create those integrations. So that's why we launched the Blackboard Marketplace, so that they have easy access to all of those capabilities that they need to run their business and improve their overall experience using the software. So we launched the Blackboard Marketplace, it was sometime last year, I think it was April last year, and we only had 34 apps at the time. And at the time, I thought that was pretty good, um, but we've grown over 150% now. So we have 86 apps in the marketplace today, and we have about over 6,000 organizations with an active app that's connected from the marketplace. So we want the act of connecting apps to be something that all organizations do in the same way that you'll be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't have an, uh, an app connected on their smartphone. So we're actively trying to grow the number of apps that we have listed in the marketplace, and we have lots of great partners providing really essential capabilities in the marketplace today. So if you're a developer out there in the session and you've created something valuable that you think many organizations will be interested in, I'm actually doing a session tomorrow at Partner Day where I'll be giving a quick overview on how you can get your app listed in the marketplace and join our growing community of partners. So to further accelerate the growth of the marketplace and also as a way for Blackboard to give back to the tech community, Blackboard launched the Social Good Startup Program last year. So this is a 12 month program where Blackboard invests in some really exciting social good startups by providing support and resources to help them succeed in the Sky Developer ecosystem. And in its first year last year, we had 14 startups in the first cohort. So these startups were chosen because of the special innovation that they bring to our customers, and they have solutions that are very complementary to our solutions. So we took them under our wing and we helped them accelerate their progress by providing a test environment and a private support channel with one-on-one -on -one check ins to help guide their basic integration strategy. And from last year's cohort, we've introduced new capabilities to the marketplace such as video storytelling, we have AI-driven prospecting tools, 
online volunteer training systems and SMS tools for donor engagement. So if you're interested in joining the program, we're currently reviewing some applicants for the July 2021 cohort. So if you're a startup with at least one paying customer um, and have a product that extends or complements our solutions, and you think that you can benefit from this program, just reach out to sgsp at blackboard.com um, to get more information. And we'll also have a link to the actual application form uh, in the resource section of this presentation. All right, so that brings us to the next part of the session where I'll be sharing some examples of Sky Developer in use, starting with Sky API. So let's talk about how Sky API is commonly used. So we've already covered who uses it. It's basically all of you at DevCon, so customers, consultants, and partners. And the most common use case for Sky API is to create integrations to make Blackboard solutions work well with other systems, whether that's keeping records in sync between two systems or having one system trigger an action in another system. Or it could be workflow enhancements. So Sky API can be used to automate uh, your repetitive or tedious workflows that will save you time and hopefully money. And we also have a lot of people using Sky API to power their business intelligence. So although Blackboard does have its own Sky reporting tools, some organizations may have more advanced reporting needs where they're gathering data across many different systems and they need to produce those roll-up reports. So here's a great example of an integration. So St. Leo University are using Colleague by Lucian as their student information system, and they're using Sky API to integrate with RNXT. So although Blackboard has its own student information system and Colleague is seen as a competitive solution, this is just an example of how Sky Developer is offering our customers the choice of what systems they want to use. So in this case, St. Leo are very happy using the one that they have, but they want to use RENXT as their main fundraising solution. So a quote here, the Sky API integration is a huge time saver. It used to take half a full-time person to ensure the data is clean and in sync. So they used to have someone enter new constituent records as new students come on board. But now they have this integration that creates on average 75 constituents a week from colleague into RENXT. And the, if the constituent already exists there, they can bring the degree information to that record. So now they can use RENXT's data intelligence tools to find the major gift prospects among their graduates. So the alumni office can then start engaging with them and they can build a more targeted campaign based on the subjects that they actually studied. So here's a really cool example. This is an app created by Sean Dor Simon from his time at the Latin School of Chicago. So Sean Dor created a pronunciation app to help their faculty and staff pronounce names in their database correctly. And the reason for creating the app is because he says our name is part of our identity. Knowing how to pronounce each other's names helps strengthen our community, our connections, and it shows respect. So his app records the phonetic spelling of the name, uh, their preferred pronouns, and it also has a recorder so you can record the correct pronunciation, which is really helpful even for this session so I know how to pronounce his name correctly. And I'm sure Zawiya could appreciate that as well. Um, I actually haven't attempted Zawiya's second name, but uh, this, this is, would be an app that really helps in that scenario. So Sky API is then used uh, to add these fields to the record so that it can serve as a reminder before someone reaches out to engage with that person so that they can be addressed with respect. All right, so let's talk about Power BI. So Power BI is a really popular BI tool uh, from Microsoft's Power Platform suite of tools. And this is just a really cool story of how the developer community within various schools and colleges and universities across the world are helping each other with the Power BI connector. So a developer named Grant Quick, who was working with Aberystwyth University in Wales, he created a connector to bring data from Sky API into Power BI. 
where the Blackboard data can then be mashed with other data sources and create some really great looking dashboards and reports. So Grant was kind enough to share his work on a public GitHub uh, repo for others such as Andrew at the Ridley College to use. So this is a comment from Andrew in the Blackboard community just to say how helpful the connector was. So this started a lot of collaborations where others in the community have taken the source code of the connector and added their own enhancements. And this is exactly what Blackboard did last year, where we took the connector that was started by Grant Quick, with Grant's blessing, of course. Grant has actually moved on to a different um, company, so he was happy for someone to take the connector and improve it. So that's what we did. We made a few updates and we shared it in our app showcase. So I'll talk a bit more about the app showcase in a moment. All right, so the next few examples I'm going to share all use the Webhook API, which was released in beta last year. Um, and if you caught the announcement yesterday at the keynote, we, we're going to be making it generally available later this month. So with the Webhook API, Sky applications can receive near real-time events when a specific event type occurs within the Blackboard solution. So for example, the event type might be when a constituent's contact information changes, such as an email address change. And when this event happens within the Blackboard solution, a very lightweight JSON message gets sent to that third party application, which can then respond to that event accordingly. So the Webhook API is a bit different to other Sky APIs where instead of calling an endpoint and you get a response and some data back, when you call the Webhook API, you're actually setting up a subscription to an event type and you provide it with a URL for where that webhook message is gonna be sent. So when the event is triggered in the Blackboard solution, Blackboard is actually sending the data to you instead of the other way around. So Adrian Jarrett at the Mount Sinai Health System, he's been asking for webhooks for a very long time because he wanted to improve a workflow that he had set up to create constituent actions when the prospect status changes. So previously he had created an app to call Sky API on this recurring schedule to get the fundraisers assignment list from RENXT. Uh, then for each constituent in that list, he's making calls to check if the prospect status has changed and he calculates the age of the status by using the date. So if he sees that the age is less than a day, then he knows it was just recently changed. So now with the Webhook API, his app can create the subscription to the constituent prospect changed event. So now he doesn't need to periodically check Sky API multiple times to see if anything has changed. Instead, when the prospect status does change, his app is gonna receive a Webhook message which contains the prospect status record ID and the constituent ID. I don't know if you can see that in the tiny screenshot there. Um, the app can then make calls to get the prospect status information and the constituent action information so that it can close the old action and create a new action on the record. So this enables new actions to be set within minutes from when the status changes. So their fundraisers have the most up-to-date information to take action on. So the next example here is from Gratavid, which is a Blackboard partner with a service that sends personalized thank you videos to constituents. So that app subscribes to the new gift added event type so that it can get notified when new gifts are processed within Blackboard. So their app will respond to the event by calling Sky API. It gets more information uh, from the gift, such as who was the constituent um, and how much was the the gift for, uh, and the campaign that the gift was made to, so that it can send the appropriate personalized thank you video from their service. So the next example here is from Ben Regier from Mennonite Mission Network, who's actually doing a session at DevCon. And he's using Power Automate to listen to webhook messages to trigger a workflow to keep their data warehouse in sync. So he's using a flow in Power Automate to subscribe to the constituent deleted event so that Power Automate can delete that same record in their data warehouse. So that all sounds really simple and straightforward with webhooks, but it's actually impossible to do before webhooks was available. Um, 
because um, RENXT doesn't keep track of deleted records. So when records are deleted, you can't get that record from Sky API. So the only way that they knew that records were deleted is if they received an error when they tried to update that record, uh, which might be quite some time after that record was actually deleted. So the record count in RENXT and their data warehouse would be slightly off until they found those deleted records and removed them. But with webhooks now, they can delete that record in their data warehouse when it's deleted in RENXT. All right, last webhook example. Uh, this is from audit. This this is from Zedman Development. So David, if you're if you're in the crowd, this is for you. Uh, this is the Audit Trail Cloud app. Um, and Audit Trail Cloud is the modern version of their Audit Trail plugin that makes use of every webhook that we have available today. And as the name describes, um, the app stores all the changes within RENXT and it creates an audit trail so that you can look up any discrepancies and find when things were changed. So this app is gonna keep on getting better as we release more webhook events. So we're definitely planning to keep making more webhook events available going forward. And of course, um, if any of you are using webhooks, please give us the feedback on the events that you're interested in using for your app. And if you haven't explored webhooks yet, or maybe you're just getting started and you want to see if your Blackboard environment is triggering webhook events and sending messages, we created the webhook monitor app to provide you with that visibility of the webhook messages that are being sent from your Blackboard environment. So the app can be connected just like any other app from the marketplace. And once it's connected, you'll be able to see the webhook messages that are being sent from the environment. So this is really good for troubleshooting and testing. So you can see what actions that you do within the product actually trigger the events. And you also get to see the, the actual JSON payload of data that gets sent to the app. So you can head to the Webhook API reference page on the Sky Developer Portal, where we have a tutorial on how you can get this set up today. All right, so that's enough about Webhooks for now. Next, I wanna talk about the Microsoft Power Platform Connector for RE NXT. So in case you missed it, this connector was released towards the end of last year, and it's really, been a huge game changer for empowering uh, non-developers to solve real problems, building automated workflows and apps using Power Automate and Power Apps. And since then, many of you have attended the Accelerator classes run by Heather McLean and Trevor Kelly. And there have been several conferences, uh, several sessions at this conference uh, featuring Power Automate. Um, I popped into one yesterday led by Trevor Kelly and Glenn Hudson, saw a glimpse of what they were doing um, to get data from database view using Q and using Power Automate to perform automations on top of that. I thought it was such a creative problem um, or creative way of solving that problem that a lot of you have. And of course, we have the skills labs. So if you're lucky enough to get a seat in one of those, we have experts like Ben Lambert providing classes on how to use Power Automate and Power Apps together with Sky Add-ins. But don't worry if you didn't get a seat on that or miss the sessions, because um, I think you can still get the videos on demand. Um, but also, we have some other resources on the Sky Developer Portal that you should check out that will help you get started. So under the documentation section, we have a Microsoft Power Platform section um, with some tutorials specifically for Power Automate and Power Apps. So for Power Automate, we have tutorials for setting up a gift notification when a gift of a certain amount comes in or a certain uh, type comes in. Um, you can set it up to notify any stakeholders. Uh, we have a volunteer sign-up form tutorial that you can use with either Microsoft Forms or you can use it with Power Apps um, to capture volunteers' information and create a constituent record from that. And we also have a birthday notification tutorial so you can set up reminders to your fundraisers when a constituent's birthday is coming up. And we also have some basic tutorials for Power Apps too, including Power Apps with Sky add-ins, which I'll talk about a bit more later. So another really exciting resource that was announced by Meredith again yesterday in the keynote is the Blackboard Community Power Platform Showcase. So this is where 
people in the Sky developer community can share the awesome flows and apps that they've created using the Power Platform tools. So it's a great place to start if you're just curious about what's possible or problems that other people have solved. So you can use the filters and you can sort by difficulty level, you can sort by category, um, whether you want to see things for Power Apps or Power Automate. And each item in this list links to a post in the Blackboard community where you can engage with the person who created it. So you can ask them questions, uh, you can download the file so you can get it up and running without needing to start from scratch. So the beauty uh, of the flows is that they're easily modified so you can edit and adapt them to suit your own workflow. And if you manage to improve it or add some cool new features, you can follow the instructions here to submit um, your flow to the showcase. So it's really exciting to be able to offer this to the developer community. Bill Walsh mentioned um, yesterday that one of the principles of the developer conference was to get customers to uh, share more cool things with everything, everyone else. So thanks to all of you who helped us get this off the ground and definitely keep checking back on this page because some of the creations from the skills lab are gonna be submitted here. Um, so you can you can check out what they're what they're building in those sessions. Uh, so between this and the tutorials we have, there should be plenty to help you get up and running. All right, next we have some or we have a special edition to the app showcase. Um, if you're not familiar with the app showcase, it's where we feature the art of the possible to inspire new ideas and also show examples of how some of the developer concepts are put into practice. So it's similar to the community showcase um, in that we want it to be community driven, um, except this is uh, sharing of open source code uh, from GitHub repos. So the exciting new addition here is the uh, Financial Edge NXT custom connector submitted by our friends at MP Automate. So now FE NXT customers can start tinkering with the awesomeness of Power Automate. Um, so what you'll find there in the GitHub repo uh, is the source code to create your own custom connector for Power Automate that includes the APIs that talk to FE NXT. So a custom connector is essentially an open API, um, formerly known as Swagger. Um, it's just a document that tells Power Automate how to present the APIs in its interface. Um, so if you want to have a go at creating a custom connector, this is a great place to start. And while you're on the app showcase, you can check out the other cool things that we have there, uh, such as um, we have a few webhook demos. We have a Python connector that was actually contributed by someone in the community. We also have a headless data sync console app, which is an, an example of how you can have an app that isn't intended to have a UI um, or an interactive user experience which is really common if you have scripts that are just running to integrate data in a headless, fa in a headless fashion, which is the perfect segue to talk about the NXT data integration API. So again, this is a new API that was uh, released to the general audience and it was announced um, yesterday. There was a blog post that was put into the Sky Developer Community blog. So you can check that out for more details. So this is a new API that's optimized for that headless data integration or data syncing scenario. Most of the other Sky APIs are very much based on interactions that users can do in the UI of our solutions, which is why most of the endpoints that you see in Sky API match data or functionality that you see in the UI within our products. And of course, that's why we get asked all the time, why are there gaps in Sky API where there's some database view only fields um, that aren't available in web view and therefore not available in Sky API. Well, now with this API, uh, the NXT data integration API, it bridges some of those gaps um, as it contains some endpoints that provide access to things that aren't available even in web view. So for example, the ability to create, retrieve, update, and delete campaigns, funds, and appeals. And it also provides um, some access to some constituent and address fields that aren't in web view. So this API was built on a different architecture to those older APIs. And because of that, um, we we're able to develop these endpoints much, fast, much faster. So in a short space of time, uh, we have now over 60 endpoints in this API. 
So we're really excited to share this uh, with all Sky developers. We'll love to get your feedback too. Um, when you look at it, you'll notice that it looks a bit different to our other APIs. So definitely let us know what you think and we'll love to know what you're able to create from it. All right, I can see that time is running out. So let's switch gears and talk about a few Sky UX examples. Um, so in the Demystify Sky session yesterday, I talked about what Sky UX is. If you missed that, um, the recording should be ready. Um, but in a nutshell, Sky UX is Blackboard's design system. It includes uh, an open source set of tools to create applications that adhere to our design principles and patterns. So a great example of how Sky UX is being used is from the Dalton School. Um, so what they really wanted was some facilities management functionality so that staff and students can book rooms and look up schedules. So one of their students spent a summer to create a scheduling app using their own tech stack and Sky UX. So when I asked them why they decided to use Sky UX for their app, they said that they wanted users to think that it was a part of the Blackboard software, which um, everyone at the school is already familiar with. And because they had limited time, it was also the quickest approach since they didn't have to find a designer and mock everything up that had already been defined by the Sky UX design system. So they can just focus on creating the system and start coding. And since the Sky UX components are all open source, they were able to submit issues uh, to our GitHub repos and let us know of any feature requests they have or any bugs that they uncovered. So this next example comes from another partner who I've talked about a lot in the past, um, and that's because they keep coming up with great things. So this is Red Arc. They're based in Sydney, Australia. So Red Arc are probably most well known for their work with Sky Add-ins, um, which of course they also use Sky UX to create a more seamless experience. Um, but when they need more real estate than what an add-in can provide, they can still deliver a cohesive user experience um, by using their own Sky UX spa. So spa is a single page application. So here's an example of a quick gift entry add-in on the RENXT homepage. So the add-in here uh, appears as a link in that task panel. And when the user clicks on that link uh, to enter a quick gift, their app launches a full Sky UX page that's hosted by Red Arc on their own domain. Um, and they're leveraging Angular components uh, just to speed up their development time. And the same concept applies here to their Blackboard grant making and RENXT integration app where they needed more real estate to take the user through the configuration experience. And now that grant making has made the leap to use Sky UX and the Red Arc um, and RENXT was already using Sky UX. So the Red Arc app can now look the part and more importantly, the users are gonna be familiar with this user interface. All right, so last but not least, uh, let's look at some Sky Add-ins examples. And I always leave Sky Add-ins last because it, A, it's the newest of the three capabilities, and B, because it's most effective when it's used with Sky API and Sky UX to create that really uh, tight integration experience. And again, I uh, introduced Sky Add-ins in the Demystify Sky session yesterday. Um, so let's dive into some examples. All right, so this first one is actually the very first Sky Add-in example that we had from a partner, and that's from PaperSave. So PaperSave provides a complete document management solution to our customers, and they've used Sky Add-ins to bring that functionality into RENXT, FENXT, and church management record pages. And even though these solutions do have some basic document attachment features, it's really not comparable to what PaperSave provides. So PaperSafe specializes in document management workflows, and they've delivered an integration where users can manage the documents stored uh, in PaperSafe within the context of the record in the Blackboard solution. Uh, so this example we see here is their first step in bringing PaperSafe to WebView. And you can see in this quote, it quickly became a feature um, that customers depended on. But as all good customers do, they demanded more. So we worked with PaperSafe um, to identify some key workflows that customers were really asking for 
to be made available in WebView. And one of those workflows is what they call the side-by-side -side entry workflow, where typically customers um, will have a paper save document open in one browser window and the Blackboard gift entry form in another. And previously, this was only possible uh, to do with a paper save plugin in database view. So we worked together on the gift batch entry form extension point that now allows developers to add their own tab on the entry form when they're adding a gift to a batch. So through the magic of some event triggers and interactions between the tabs, PapeSave were able to create an experience where a user can navigate the gifts in a batch in RENXT while automatically loading the corresponding documents in PapeSave, making the whole data entry process much more efficient and saves customers a lot of time. So we've been continuing to invest in Sky Add-ins over the past year, introducing new extension points um, to developers to bring their features to, um, such as the homepage tile dashboard in RENXT, which is a really great extension point um, if you want to present any roll-up data or aggregate data that isn't to a specific um, record. And with the release of events in RENXT, we released the tile dashboards and page action extensions to the event record page and the participant page. So another exciting announcement that was made yesterday was the Power Apps host bar uh, that makes it much easier to use Power Apps with Sky add-ins. And this is really a sleeper hit because on the face of it, it doesn't seem that exciting, but it really lowers the barrier of entry for Sky add-ins. So I explained yesterday that Sky add-ins loads as iframes within Blackboard Solutions. And those iframes load content from a URL that's provided when the add-in is registered. So as a developer, the typical approach would be to create an HTML page with some content. And you'll probably want to style that page with some CSS to make it look good. And you'll need to find a place to host the page. And, and you'll need to load the Sky Add-ins client library so that it can talk to the Blackboard host page. Well, all of that complexity goes away if you use the Power Apps host bar, because now you can use Power Apps to build your UI. And instead of finding a hosting provider and getting your own URL uh, for the add-in to load, we provide you with this URL to the Power Apps host bar, where you can then pass in your Power App ID into the query string. So it just removes all of that complexity. You don't have to worry about it. We give you the URL. So here's an example of a Power App that's loaded in the event tile dashboard extension point. So this is a screenshot from an event record page for um, afternoon tea, which sounds lovely. And this Power App is an email event participant form. So the scenario is if you're an organization, you need to send out an email uh, to all the event participants. Um, so maybe if there's a change to an event or uh, you just need to thank everyone for attending, the Power App receives the event ID as a context value so that it can then use Sky API to get the emails of the participant list for the event and the user can compose the email that gets sent out to that list. So that sounds like it could be native functionality, but it's so exciting to think that you don't need to be an engineer uh, or even a developer to extend the product in this way. Um, instead, you just need a little passion for solving problems. And of course, a little patience always helps. So with that, I hope you've seen something in today's session to inspire you to get started on your Sky Developer journey. And in case you weren't aware, we now do offer free test environments uh, for RENXT, FENXT Church Management, Education Management, and most recently, BBMS. So for more information on how to get access, just head over to the Sky Developer Portal and go through the Get Started Guide. Um, so I hope you'll create something amazing that we can talk about at the Developers Conference next year. And I hope I've left enough time to take some questions. Great. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, Janet, I know that you have been monitoring the questions that our participants have submitted through Slido. Um, I'll let you go ahead and 
come off of the mute and I will pull up those questions as Ben starts to answer them, okay? Sounds great. I think, yeah, you have the way to show the screen. Yes, I am navigating have, to that. Yeah, we do have more than Ben, um, but I think they've been definitely people have been voting. So if you have got into Slido, you can vote up to make sure questions get answered and I'll highlight them when it comes on the screen. Um, let me know if it's showing up for you. Not quite yet, so I'll read for you, Ben. It says, does the Power BI connector for Sky API get updated with new Sky API endpoints as new API endpoints are available, or does it have to be updated manually? How often does Blackboard update that if manual? Great question, Alex. Um, so yeah, the Power BI connector we put on our app showcase. So it's really um, us providing the code for our customers to pick up and create their own connector. So it's not something that we're actively updating on a regular basis, um, but it's something that you can take and look at the source code and you can add um, support for the new API endpoints as they become available. Now, I know that there's a lot of interest in Power BI and having a connector that's officially certified um, through Microsoft. When that is the case, you'll be able to find the Power BI connector on our marketplace. But where it is now, it's on our app showcase as just a way to help our uh, customers build their own connectors. So the short answer is we're not actively updating it on a regular basis. Thank you. Next one is webhooks similar to what would happen if Blackboard created trigger for Power Automate for Razor's Edge NXT. I, currently, there is no trigger. That is true. We have actually been in communication with Microsoft because um, Power Automate does not support the um, cloud events schema that's required to set up a webhook subscription. Um, we've been told that it's on the roadmap so that they can support webhooks natively. However, there is a way to set up um, Power Automate to respond to webhook triggers. Um, there's not an easy way to describe it, so maybe I can reach out to you, Alex, and provide you with instructions on how to do that. But there is a way, it's just not the official Power Automate way. I made a few guesses because some of the questions said, is this available? But I'm pretty sure based on the timing, you were talking about webhooks. Are webhooks available for self-hosted CRM sites? So webhooks right now, um, are in, the webhook events that we have are all for RENXT and church management. Um, so no, they're not available for CRM sites. And this one, the email events participants app, does that write data back to RE? Um, I don't believe so. So that so we're going to have a tutorial to um, show you how you can create that. Um, you can easily um, use the API to um, if you want to write something onto each record just to mark that um, that participant has received that email. Um, you'll be able to do that through the API. Um, so in the instructions that we provide, as I said, with these flows, you can modify them um, very easily. Um, so even though the example that we have today, I don't believe it does write back the data, but you can try modifying it. And if you do, submit it to the showcase so um, other people can benefit from it. Thanks, Got time for one or two more, or am I wearing you out? No, we can, if there's two more, we can do that. This one, I think, was a question about App Showcase and not a question about Slido or Teams. <laughs> I think it was, is there anyone at Blackboard to answer questions as we attempt to, I, I didn't know if setting up the App Showcase was a thing. No, so you can, uh, the App Showcase is just a, a listing on the Sky Developer Portal, so you don't need to do anything to set it up. If you just go to developer.blackboard.com uh, under documentation, there's a link there to the Showcase. Um, where you can see all the samples that we have listed there. Awesome, and thank then, you. And then for each item, there are links to a GitHub repo 
where whoever submitted um, the the showcase app, um, most of them have provided instructions within uh, GitHub. Awesome. The last one was a when question, and I already warned Alex that we don't necessarily have roadmap information today, but I didn't know if you had any other context on anything else about the event participant API. General rule of thumb is when that functionality comes into the event participant in WebView, um, that's when you can expect to see it in Sky API. And if it's already there in WebView, let us know and we'll go and hunt it down and make sure it gets done. Awesome. Thank you so much.